Hey, what is up guys? So we are going to be doing a deck profile on the Gigaplant Sylvan deck that I played a few weeks ago. Totally forgot to upload the deck profile for you guys, but you know, you guys have been asking for it and you guys basically reminded me. So thanks a lot for that guys. But anyways, let's go ahead and go into the brief little deck explanation. Then we'll get on with the deck profile and then I'll explain the choices as we go along. So first off, the play style of this deck is a relatively fast deck and it has a lot of potential in the future simply because it has this card called Sylvan Charity, which makes the deck absolutely crazy. I mean, it's basically a graceful charity. The way that this deck runs is it likes to excavate cards, which essentially is like milling cards, like kind of like how Lightsworn send cards from the deck to the graveyard. It's not the same thing as milling. They're, they're calling this excavate, so it's not like a discard, it's not like you send from the graveyard. You are excavating. It's a new thing in Yu-Gi-Oh, and that means you reveal them, then you send them to the graveyard. Usually what happens is you get to send the monsters, and then you don't send the spell and trap. Those basically go to the bottom of your deck, and sometimes you can change the order. So think of it as a light sworn deck with a little bit more control, although there is sometimes still a luck aspect in the deck. But it's a really totally fast, explosive deck, and go for pretty big, huge plays, which I really like, and you get going for these huge plays. But at the end of the day, it's still an archetype, and some of you guys know, I love decks that just work together. I like the creativity. Uh, there is more creativity with this deck because I'm playing uh, Giga Plant, so this really allows me access to making different monsters that the deck normally wouldn't have access to, especially with getting back Spore multiple times with Giga Plant. It can become pretty nasty, but it's a relatively fun deck, and in a good player's hand, this is a very combo-licious deck uh, because, you know, I'm playing a different build. I'm not playing a traditional Sylvan deck, uh, which can be considered better, but, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see what other support they come out for the future. But anyways, let's go ahead and do the uh, deck profile. If you guys want to check out how the deck actually plays because it is pretty fast and it can really overwhelm your opponent really fast. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the description box if you guys want to check out a uh, gameplay from this deck. But now let's get started. So first off, we're playing one bad boy over here, Hermitry. This card is basically one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, the reason why I only play one of it is because you can get it back multiple times and it really becomes a problem for your opponent. If this card gets its effect off multiple times, you're at a huge advantage in the game. And to top that off, um, he is a bad card to draw, just as a heads up. That's why I'm only playing one. But don't worry, you can recycle him a lot. Uh, basically, your best play first turn in this deck, majority of the time is going to be like lone fire into this. Uh, sometimes you can... Uh, go for this. This is absolutely crazy. I still can't believe that this is a card. It's Graceful Charity, and there's, like, no downside other than, oh, you can only activate one of them per turn. Like, as if that's a downside. Like, what if Graceful Charity was legal and said, you can only activate one? I'm sure we would still play three of them. But anyways, we'll get into that card later. But uh, Hermitry makes it so you can excavate one card. So basically, send one card from the top of your deck to the graveyard. If it's a plant, you get to... Um, draw one card so not only do you get that like plant effect but then you get a draw card so that's like a plus two sometimes even plus more like it depends on what you're sending but um otherwise you place it at the bottom of your deck and if this card is excavated so a lot of these cards have effects when like most of their half of their effects are going to be sending cards or excavating them from the uh deck to the graveyard the other effect is when they are sent from the deck to the graveyard they get some other effect it's called excavating i'm just going to keep on saying sending it from the deck to the graveyard because it'll make more sense for you guys and it's pretty much the same thing uh next up we have uh oh wait forgot to explain his other effect so <laughs> if he is excavating which means if he's sent from the deck to the graveyard uh you get to look at up to three uh cards from the top of your deck and then rearrange them in any order Order. Now, most of them say up to three, up to five, up to some number, and the thing is, like, I don't see why you'd want to choose less unless you're setting up the, like, the top seven or something ridiculous like that. But yeah, I don't see why you would want to change it. I think that, uh, you know, it's kind of irrelevant to say up to three cards. There's no reason why you'd want to choose less. Very, very rarely. I don't know for whatever reason if you're going to change it, but it's always going to be the most, you're going to get most bang for your buck if you choose more monsters. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to choose less. Next up, we have two Sejikoya or Sakajuya. I don't know. Anyways, this card is pretty awesome because he is level seven. So uh, that allows access to rank seven monsters. And even though the Sylvans have a rank seven monster, I still find Draco Sack and Big Eye to be the best. This card basically has the potential to bounce stuff as long as you have the right setup. But most of the time, Big Eye is just, is Big Eye. I mean, this card allows for OTKs more than I would say Big Eye and Draco Sack. But, uh, you know, I would still I still think these cards are relevant. I mean, you don't need to play three of these. I still think, I mean, basically, this is like a mist worm at some point. So you could just bounce a bunch of cards, and a lot, a lot of times you can just win. Uh, so it's like an OTK-oriented card, whereas these cards, uh, they're just huge, huge advantage gainers. Uh, but um, he also has a really insane effect. I mean, he's really easy to summon, too. And when he will summon a monster sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your 
Japan. That's pretty easy. So he's not dead like this guy over here. But uh, he also has a really other insane effect. So uh, when he is excavated, uh, you get to target one Sylvan spell slash trap card in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. Now there are other uh, Sylvan trap cards which I decide not to play because we're going for a Giga Plant build. But uh, that card. That effect is insane. That means you can just add back Graceful Charity. So, not as only is Graceful Charity at 3, there's other cards that can basically search it out, and there's also uh, the ability to re-add it back, which I, I don't even know. Konami, I mean, they banned Stratos. Okay, well, I mean, for the TCG, so I stopped questioning at that point. I mean, heck, they, they made Sixth Sense legal. We're talking about those same people here, but this card is going to be absolutely crazy. We already know this is confirmed secret rare for TCG, but, you know, it's going to happen. Uh, next, I'm playing Double Giga Plant. Uh, I recommend you guys to play two because it you know, allows... Not, well, I mean, it allows access to this if you play two, but... Uh, the thing is, Giga Plant is still a really nasty card, uh, and that's the way I've designed this deck. There's also another card which I'll talk about in the future, but... This card is absolutely crazy in this deck because that allows you to just keep on bringing back Hermitry, keep on bringing back this guy over here just from being level 7. Uh, basically, this deck can basically throw out a field, and if your opponent doesn't do anything, think of it, this is basically like a Red Ice Darkness Metal Dragon. It's a really, really insane card. And you just can bring out Lone Fire and go into it. Um, and there's also uh, this card over here, obviously. Um, it technically uh, has a very little downside. I mean, it is an equip. I mean, equip's kind of considered slow right now in Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, well, I've been slow for like a long time, but um, the ability to, when this uh, card is uh, sent to the graveyard, target one normal monster in your graveyard and special summon it, that means you could re-special summon Giga Plant, and then like, Giga, you, you, uh, you summon Giga Plant, however you get it out, Lone Fire, whatever, call the haunt, you bring him out, and then you can just equip Supervise to it, and then you get its effect to special summon, and then like, if that doesn't go or anything happens, Giga Plant dies, you can bring back Giga Plant. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's absolutely ridiculous. But uh, next up, we're playing one Flower Knight. A lot of you guys told me to play more of these. I mean, I don't recommend you guys to play three of them because then you're going to have potentially clogging hands. I don't really like uh, drawing it. I mean, it just it excavates uh, the top card, which is one, which is, like, not nearly as good as, you know, cards like this, which are set cards, or, well, they're, like, flip effects. But, uh... This card is pretty awesome when you excavate it because that means you can top make it so you top deck graceful charity. But I think two is okay. Uh, I just like to attack one because like I, I just don't like the way he plays. It's just my personal taste on it. You know, like I said, you can play more if you want. But I mean, what it comes down to is you can choose one Sylvan card from your deck and place it on the top of your deck. Oh, I'll go for graceful charity. You can see it's it's pretty self-explanatory. But if you play a bunch of these and you like, I just don't like drawing it. It's just way too slow of a card. And it's eighteen, which is not bad for attack, but like. A lot of times in this deck, you won't have, like, a other play, unless you have, like, a Call of the Haunted or something like that. And that's why I'm just playing one of them. Next up, uh, I play Triple Martial Leaf. This card is amazing. So, this one lets you pop monsters. Uh, this one lets you pop spell and traps when they are excavated. Uh, this one, when it's normal summon, you can choose one or two, and you can excavate that amount of cards. Now, one thing that I do like with, um... Playing Marsh Leaf is obviously when he's excavated, he has an awesome effect. This card also has a pretty awesome effect, uh, but it, I feel like his awesome effect is only when it's excavated, and his normal sound, it just sounds one, which I really don't like too much. Uh, but I am playing Fragrant Storm in this build. I mean, if you play Mirror Match, this is like. This is like the three pluses for days. This is like plus two, uh, potentially plus three. You know, it, it becomes ridiculous. But well, for the most part, when I summon like uh, Flower Knight, or if I happen to draw Marsh Leaf and I just summon it, I usually just go for a Fragrant Storm because like they're just too weak. Uh, this card never survives fifteen. This might be able to survive, but for the most part, it's just there's no other plays. Like I'm not playing any Spell and Trap because uh, I'm playing enough cards where you know there's a lot of cards in this deck because you excavate. You know you want the highest chance to you know hit those monsters. That's why I try to play a higher monster count than my Spell and Trap. Uh, but you know Marshall is still a fantastic card nonetheless. Uh, next up we're playing a Lone Fire Blossom. Well. I'd play three if you could play three, but you can only play two. Basically, like I said, guys, most of the time you're going to be going for this, or unless you have you know, like the right setup, you want to go for it, you know, whatever card you need to go for, hey, go for it. Uh, Deadly Line, because, you know, when it's excavating, you get two tokens, allows you for better access to Synchro Summoning, although you can definitely drop this guy over here. I mean, it's not really, like, it doesn't have too much synergy in the deck, in my opinion. Uh, I just love it because it's Dandelion, and it works well when you excavate it, uh, just for the tokens, because I, li I like to Synchro Summon. If you don't really want it, you don't have to play it. I would say it's more competitive, probably, if you played without it, because it has very little synergy with the deck. Uh, but next up, we're playing three... Komoshu? They changed the name of this card. Anyways, it's just the Silver Mushroom card. Anyways, um... This card's pretty awesome. Like I said, you pop Spell and Trap, and then uh, when it's flipped face up, you can uh, mail five cards. One through five. It's just 
if why does it say up to five? Why does it say a number of one to five? But then these cards over here say like up to, I don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh, right? But anyways, he's pretty awesome that, uh, you know, like I said, he pops Spawn Trap, but um, he gets to excavate five cards, which is, I think it's a little crazy, especially since, you know, he is a flip effect, so, well, when he's flip face up. Um, so he technically isn't a flip monster, but he has a fact where when he's flipped up. Um, but anyways, 2,000 defense is pretty nasty. Like, that that's a pretty decent, like, you know, first turn play. I mean, sometimes some decks just can't get over that first turn. Um, but next up, we have uh, Spore. Spore is good because I like to synchro, and it works really well with this, really is what it comes down to. You just be like, oh, bring back Spore. Bring back Spore. If Gold Bulb was a god, heck, I'd play Gold Bulb too. You can also play Copy Plant. That's an excellent card in this deck because if you already have another monster, you can just Copy Plant another level. I actually recommend, you know what, we're going to do, do this live because... Like I said, Daniel has very little synergy, and this card lets you synchro, and that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and drop one of these in right now over Dandelion, because honestly, like I said, I feel like Dandelion, it doesn't have that rate of synergy, but it does have that token ability, but Copy Plant can just make it so, like, if you've gotten a monster out with Giga Plant, like, you go Giga Plant, get back Lone Fog, grab anything, or bring back a, a Copy Plant later on, and then you're good to go from there. Um, yeah. Copy Plant's amazing, so he can uh, target one face-up plant monster on the field to have its level become equal to the selected monster's level until the end phase. So that means a lot of access to pretty much most of your extra deck, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, next up, I play three Peacekeeper. This is another card where I, I really don't like to draw, but it has a lot of great effects. But anyways, so um, with Thermal Summon, you can excavate one card. <laughs> So that's a good effect, but the other effect basically comes down to is you get to target one level four, when he's excavated, you get to target one level four or lower plant monster in graveyard and special summon that target. Oh, level four or lower. Oh, so let's make it, that's supposed to make it so you can't get out like, you know, your good monsters. Oh, but never mind, Lone Fire is still a target, which gets you anything from your deck. So, huh. They, they kind of, I think that was a mistake right there. Like, they should have said, like, you can't special summon any level four or higher for the rest of the turn. <laughs> or any five or higher for the rest of the turn. But, you know, when you can get back Lone Fire and get anything out of your deck, but most of the stuff, like, it only comes out, like, once, then I just call it Haunted It, but, you know, that's still a pretty OP effect. Uh, but next up, I'm playing, uh, oh, I don't even, Herbal Sprout? I don't know how to pronounce some of these names, but anyways, this is, it almost looks, it reminds me of Celebi, if you guys have heard of Pokemon, but anyways, Sylvan Cherub Sprout, I think? Cherub Sprout? Yeah, okay. I played through this, I hate drawing this card, but it's, a, it's another one of those where if you, uh, you know, excavate it, it's awesome, so, um, when it's special summon, you can excavate two cards, or up, well, either one or two. <laughs> but anyways, uh, then you get to excavate uh, that many, and then um, uh, if this card is excavated, you get to special summon one level one plant type monster from your deck, and that allows you to special summon this. I just like to get this card in the graveyard as quickly as possible, but then when this card is special summon, you also get to excavate. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, I like that aspect, but for the most part, he is also level one. A lot of times in this deck, like since I'm bringing back uh, this level one guy over here, um, it just helps to be able to make formula. Uh, a lot of times, once you go for like your, you only really need like, I mean, you, heck, you could probably make Quasar on this deck to be honest. Uh, I don't know how like necessary it is because a lot of times when you go for these type of plays, you can go into like Black Rose, and Black Rose is actually really good in this deck. For some of you guys that don't know, Black Rose actually has, well, he's meant for plants, um, although he is a dragon. Uh, he has a really awesome effect that you can banish one plant type monster from your graveyard to change one defense position monster your opponent controls the face of attack position and reduces attack to zero. So sometimes that can be like, you know, just a, a game finisher move right there. Maybe they've got a bunch of monsters and they got a face down, I don't know, Spirit Reaper. Uh, you can flip it, make it zero good to go. So there's a lot of things that you can, uh, you know, really damage some people with. And also, Spirit Reaper's obviously face down, so like, it wouldn't get, you know. Uh, but then you can just keep on smacking, you know, or Marshmallow, or uh, something couldn't be destroyed by battle. I don't know, Poshul, that, not that anyone really plays x Sabers anymore, but, you know, hey, it's there. But, you know, this card is definitely an awesome card in the deck. Uh, next up for the Spell and Trap, we're playing three Fragrant Storm. It's a fantastic card in this deck because the way I've designed it is I try to make it like a turbo deck uh, without upstarts, without reckless, because uh, like I said, you want the highest chance to excavate your monsters. And I'm already playing a bunch of cards, uh, you know, that aren't monsters that if you excavate, they don't do, do anything. They just go back. But uh, this card allows really insane draw power, especially that's why I'm playing three Peacekeeper and a three Turb Sprout because like you don't need this card. Once it gets special summoned, you 
you try to excavate and you hope for the best and if it doesn't go well, oh well, it doesn't matter. You can just get rid of a fragrance store, draw one card, and if it's a plant type monster, you reveal it and you get to draw one more card. So that allows a lot of sacking in the deck, especially when you're setting up with Sylvan Charity, which is really awesome, uh, which is the next card. You play three of it. It's pretty awesome. So you draw three. Oh, by the way, this card does work with Mystical Rough Tunnel, which is really nasty, but you draw three cards, you reveal two cards in your hand, including at least one Sylvan card, and you place them on the top of your deck in any order. If you don't have any Sylvan cards in your graveyard, we will all the cards in your hand and place them on the top of your deck in any order. Obviously, it has kind of like a, a semi-allure of darkness, but it's not really like that negative. But this card, this card is insane. Like, how is this card legal, and how is it at three, but Stratos is still banned, right? Uh, next up, we have three Miracle Fertilizer. This card's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of times in this deck, you don't really need your normal summon because you're going to be just going for your special summons anyways. Most of the time, your normal summon is like Lone Fire, or like you can set a card, or you can summon this. But like, your normal summons in this deck that aren't Lone Fire are very, very weak, I would say, in this deck. So, uh, most of the time, this won't really hurt you, but, uh, once per turn- <laughs> saying, fact, once per turn, you can select a Planet Time Monster and Gear and Special Summon it. Oh, no, you can't Normal Summon. But don't worry, because you can Special Summon it as many times as you want, which is- absolutely crazy but most of the time you're going to be going for giga plant you're going to be getting giga plants effect and then you're just going to keep on doing some shenanigans now the thing is obviously uh you know since you can't normal summon you can't resummon your gemini monster um but you have this card called supervise which makes it oh it's cool bro it gets its effect and then whenever you go for your your plays and giga plant goes away you just bring back giga plant so it's a pretty op card in that aspect like the combination with miracle fertilizer and supervise works fantastic so i think these two cards work very well especially with giga plant obviously um, next up uh, supervised it's pretty self-explanatory you equip to giga plant the only target and it gains its effects and then when this face-up card is sent from the field to the graveyard you target a one normal monster graveyard spot summon it which means giga plant this card only works with giga plant in this deck i mean there there are some other cards uh that do work with gemini's i can't think of them right now uh there is one card that searches out something uh, this, i think it's like a gemini butterfly card but uh, Geminis aren't really a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh, so I figured, you know, it'd be cool to bring them back. That's basically why I built this deck. Um, next up, we have Mount Sylva Sylvania. But uh, anyways, its effect is you can send one plant-type monster from your hand or face-up from your side of the field to the Griever to choose one Sylvan card from your deck and place it on the top of the deck, which all comes down to Sylvan Charity, which is, like, searchable. Like, it, you're getting rid of a card, but, like, it's... It doesn't make up for how awesome Sylvan Charity is. It's it's a really OP card. That's basically what this is used for. Also, once per turn during your opponent's end phase, you can excavate the top card of your deck. So that's pretty awesome. It lets you have a little bit of uh, you know utility for it. But for the most part, you're putting this card to use this card as quickly as possible and as many times as possible. Next up, lastly for traps, just triple call the haunted. The way I see this deck is it's a really aggressive deck, and the thing is. You don't really need your traps to stop your opponent's play because you're just not going to give your opponent that turn. You're just going to go for Call of the Haunted, bring back your Giga Plant, normal turn Giga Plant, get out another card. Uh, I mean, heck, you can Giga Plant for another Giga Plant, which is insane, and then equip that other Giga Plant that you ran out with Supervised to bring out another monster. So you can kind of see how quickly the deck can get, especially when you bring back this card and you abuse this card, then you get to excavate more cards, and then per traps draw, and then you have this card, which is, you know decent you can back lone fire to special this from the deck like the deck has a lot of options just to go for you know really big plays and if your opponent stops your first play i mean you have three call of the haunted you have three miracle fertilizer get your play off just get your play off and just otk them that's basically how uh the deck can play and sometimes you can luck sack them really hard with this card and basically win from the just this card alone if you mill the right cards with this uh if you just mill like even just milling one it gives you a decent amount of advantage especially if this card survives uh because this is technically kind of a synchro deck because you can bring back now we, uh, that i've thrown a coffee plant you have a lot more options um as far as monster goes in the extra deck we are playing one Jeweled Red Dragon Arch. I'll mention the cards are a little bit more obscure. Oh, this card is definitely obscure. Queen of Thorns. So, uh, this card's awesome, especially if you're playing against a deck that, like, only likes the Synchro or XYZ. Uh, each player must play a thousand light points to normal summon or special summon a non plant type monster from their hand. So, there are certain decks that, I mean, minimum, that's, like, at least one to two thousand, like, if they're gonna go for, like, a play. Um, and that becomes really nasty for a lot of decks. Um, now, unfortunately, it's not just uh, special summon in general. It has to be from their hand, so it pretty much is like inherent special summons. But, you know, it also makes them take a thousand for normals. So some decks get additional normal summons. Uh, well, if you play against Evil Swarm, well, you just, you just get lucky with uh, this card over here and just be like, oh, see you later, Ophion. But, you know, Evil Swarm is a deck where they get additional normal summons. Uh, Hunters get additional normal summons. Constellar. So, I mean, sometimes you can put your opponent into the point where if, if they're under a thousand life points, they just can't summon. And at that point, you win. So, 
I love this card. It's a pretty awesome card, and, uh, you know, it sacks people pretty hard. That's, um, what is it? Uh, I, I like this because it allows kind of faster options for it. Um, there are times where it's a little bit difficult to make, but uh, once you have Spore, though, it, it sets it up pretty easy. Now that I've thrown Copy Plant, this will be a much easier card to make. Uh, this card's fantastic, is what it comes down to, uh, if you can make it when your opponent's at really low life, because then they can't do anything. Uh, threw out an Ancient Fairy Dragon, because, you know, I'm playing Field Spell, and, like, it's not bad in that aspect. Um, it also has the effect that you can uh, Special Summon a level 4 lower monster in, from your hand, although I don't think there's really anything that you'd really want to go for. Maybe a Copy Plant? Um, just to make something, if you really want to just like bounce something, you need to get rid of something immediately. I don't know. Uh, the options are there, uh, but I'll mouse over them. I'm trying to think of any that's really necessary to mention. I don't think there really isn't anything to mention uh, in this deck. One thing I do mention, uh, need to mention is I do recommend you guys to play uh, Gachi because there's a lot of times versus slower decks where when you set this card it survives and then you set another one they attack and it survives and like and then from there it doesn't really do anything so like I was like well you know Gachi's a decent card let's see you throw up a you know a decent monster that not only is defensive but technically can be offensive because you're gonna be boosting up all your monsters by 400 attack as long as you have both of the uh, attachments on it so I think that Gachi is a fantastic card in this deck but man what a long deck profile but there's there's a lot of cards that need to explain you know reasons why. But uh, if you guys have any suggestions for this deck, like I said, this is more so for a, I would say more fun build, but it can be kind of considered competitive because, you know, I think Supervise and Miracle Fertilizer open up a lot of utility. I mean, this is insane effect once per turn. It's not just like once you get to bring out that monster. It's just once per turn, you get to special summon it. So I think that that is an insane card. As long as you're able to protect your stuff and, you know, nothing happens, it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent relatively quick. And if they don't respond to it, they're just going to lose. And that's basically how the deck was designed. But... Yeah, it's really cool to see that, you know, I'm still, Gemini's are still kind of holding up, because, I mean, from the video, like I said, guys, check out the video uh, of this deck actually in action, because you'll see that, like, Supervise and uh, Miracle and uh, for, uh, Fragrance Storm are really awesome cards, even though they're not technically meta, and a lot of players probably won't be playing them in this deck. You can see the potential that they have, because I like building decks that use cards that are a little bit unconventional, and I like the creativity aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh! the most, and uh, I think this is pretty cool. But anyways, have some fun with the deck, guys. Have a great day. Asian Eyes, signing out.